Hey everybody, it's Randy with Carchaeology, and Sebastian is coming over today, and we're going to do a couple of things on the CRX2. So there's brand new brakes that were installed on this car a number of years ago, but the the uh, job wasn't totally completed. Also, new axles were put on in here, and apparently one of the clamps was contacting the transmission case, and so it was making it so this front wheel would not roll. Now I think it may have clearanced itself while it was being moved around on the truck, but. Uh, uh, we will see. So I want to try to get the brakes put back together. Things bled uh, so we can make sure that it does have brakes, make sure that it rolls properly, and then we'll get it on into the lab and start further work. Now, everybody's been, of course, asking about the power plants in these cars. And so I wanted to walk you through that uh, and show you what we're starting with here. So when this car was first put together by the folks at Racing Beat, uh, for Car and Driver magazine, I started out with a stock Honda CRX that Honda donated to the magazine. And they approached them asking for a second drivetrain so they could make it a dual engine car and four wheel drive. So when it was first put together, it had two 1.5 liter engines in it uh, with automatic transmission so that they would sync up wise and easy. Um, but then they decided, well, it's time to make it go a little bit faster. And so they approached Honda to see if they would pitch in some new engines that were a little bigger. And well, they agreed. So Honda donated uh, to the project two uh, Honda Accords that it had been damaged in transit. These were brand new cars in 1985. And the drivetrains that came out of them are 1.8 liter Honda motors with their transmissions, um, which I believe is a four speed transmission or a five speed transmission, automatic of course. Uh, but that changed the gear ratios of everything, made it significantly more uh, powerful. Each one of these engines is roughly about 101 horsepower, I believe. Uh, and, uh, well, there's one here in the front. And walking around the back here, there is one of these bad boys back here. Now, these are identical engines that are set up here in this car. And again, it's hooked up with an automatic transmission. And the one benefit of that is that the transmissions and the engine speed and all of that tend to kind of regulate themselves. Plus, you don't have to deal with the um, uh, mechanical part of trying to make two different transmissions shift if it were a stick. So opening up the interior here, you can see there is a single shifter there. And there's a little toggle switch right there underneath the dash. So when you turn on the ignition, you crank it, it starts one engine, you flip that switch, you crank it again, and it starts the second engine. So intake for that rear engine actually pulls in through this hole right here. Uh, you gotta be careful not to splash a whole lot of water in there or gasoline, uh, but uh, in any case, that is the air intake for that. The radiators are both run uh, up to the front. Uh, so there's a larger radiator in here with extra outlets that run underneath the car and into the back. So as far as suspension in the back, they basically took a whole front subframe and put it in here underneath the car. Now I'm going to get down here and see if I can show it to you here so you can see it. I'll have to get some better videos as we get into this, but this is a whole front subframe from that Honda Accord. Now, obviously, they fused the steering so that it uh, does not steer uh, and the wheels stay straight. Um, but that whole subframe is there. In fact, this is a part of the torsion or the support for it that sticks out underneath the exhaust pipes, which is kind of a neat little hiding spot. I need to get another one of these tips to replace this one that was lost. But uh, four-wheel disc brakes, of course, where they did new brakes all the way around. I've got to get those things going. Uh, we need to uh, see if we can get the engines to turn, uh, see if we can get them to start. I know for storage, Joe, the previous owner, had uh, put some, uh, he had pulled the plugs, he had put some Marvel Mister oil into the engines uh, so that things wouldn't seize up there in the Florida weather. And I'm thankful for that. So we need to hook things up, get it cranking over, uh, and then we'll put the plugs and stuff 
back in it and see if we can get it to fire. Now, he did mention that there may be a problem with the starter on the rear engine. Need to source that out and see what we can figure out in regards to that. Uh, also, the fuel tank, the fuel cell, which is right down in here, that has developed a leak, which is what has caused him to park this thing uh, some 10 years ago now or so, maybe even longer. Okay, so we're trying to figure out why this uh, wheel is not turning, and it looks like Seb figured it out. The uh, bolts that held the caliper on went through way too deep, and they just ground fucking gnarly things in these brand new discs. But uh, anyway, no wonder it wouldn't turn. So that's what was keeping that wheel from, uh, from spinning, but that shouldn't be too difficult to rectify. And then we can get it all back on there. Right on, we now have the CRX here in the lab and we can start the dissection of it and uh, trying to figure out what all makes this thing tick. So first uh, thing we've got to do is work on getting that fuel tank out of there. It's hidden back behind the seat here uh, and it looks like we're probably gonna have to pull the front panel of this nicely crafted box here off and then pull it out through the interior of the car. So. Uh, still need to sort brakes and that sort of thing, but at least we've got it rolling. So we're going to jack it up, put it on jack stands, and then dig in. Up, up in the air. fun to explore under there in a little while. So I just wonder if we could pull that whole front panel off of there somehow. That's the one piece. Is it, oh, it's one piece like curved up over the top? I, I'm trying to see because there's the, the roll bar pretty much behind. No, it's like, it's maybe cut here. Okay. Right. Thing is, it's attached everywhere. There is all the rivets. Right. To the body. Huh. Yeah, you look at the bottom. Right. The whole line is riveted to the body. Yeah. The but thing. I think that's probably your best access point is uh, to get that panel yeah. off of there. Yeah. I mean, it's a bunch of rivets, but. No, no, it's okay. We can drill everything and let it come. Right. And maybe without ingluing everything even. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But you know what? Huh? get the carpet off of there so we're not getting it all mucky and greasy and it'll also allow access to what's yeah, there. Yeah, I can rivet it, I can rivet it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we can access all those rivets, take that panel right off and have easy access to the tank. Or at least that's the hope. Yeah, now it's good. Yep. Everywhere. Awesome. 200 rivets. 200 rivets. Here we go. <laughs> getting the seats out of the way so we'll have really open access to get this panel out and get down into the engine compartment there seems to be the only way while it's out we'll be able to do some cleanup of the carpets and things like that as well look at that already recouping some of my investment there with pocket change found underneath the seat those uh, high acceleration runs draining the pocket of the driver you certainly you took that in you well you they put it put it here and you, see let's see how much there it, okay i'm tipping the uh mechanic there there it looks like yeah, you know maybe that, 60 maybe 70 cents bucket. there all right well, i don't know how many total rivets there are there but it's probably been a lot probably 30 rivets and a bunch of screws we're getting closer though yeah 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 Oh, good. That's so not only was it riveted and screwed, it's been glued as well. They didn't want this piece falling out of there. Um, so it's taken quite a bit of effort to get it oh, look out. Look at the gas tank. 
<laughs> oh, oh, what is there a problem with the gas tank? <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I'd say it was leaking. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, it's all glued in the corner of the wires. There we go. Ta da! Man, that was insane. Some blood from there. Yeah. And there we go. There's our fuel leak. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a fuel tank do that. That's insane. They must have put some kerosene in it. Well, it's a bladder for, you know, it's a fuel cell, which is why it was all sealed up in there so well, but um, it just like totally disintegrated. I guess they do that over time. And uh, there you go. You can see the engine back in there. You can see some of the supports that are going on there, the fan that was set up. Pretty insane, but there's our first issue. That's not gonna hold any liquid. <laughs> Fantastic. And that fuel cell there, that's going to be a challenge. That's my first time dealing with something like that. If anybody's got any tips on what to do or where to go to get that fixed, let me know. So we got all the wheels off. We're going to bleed the brakes, uh, get these things all working so that once we do get it running, it will stop. Uh, that is something that we have found is quite important here. There have been vehicles we've gotten running and driving without brakes, and that never really ends well. So uh, anyway, we'll get the brakes working on the CRX, get that fuel cell issue worked out, um, then get a battery for it, and fire it up. I want to make this thing go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I'm feeling pedal. I'm sure you have Yeah. So easy access to the spark plugs with that panel out of there. <laughs> That's pretty dreamy. So we're going to pull the plugs out and spin each of the engines if we can, make sure that they are turning free. We're not going to try to start it or anything. Just want to make sure that they are turning smoothly, uh, both front and back. So we've got a battery installed here. We've got the plugs out of the front engine. Now Seb's getting the ones in the back. Okay, so turn on the ignition here. I'm not... Barely getting a light, so I think that battery is pretty dead. You want me to try the other one? Um, no, maybe just run uh, run jumpers to that one. Can I see? Yeah. To the big one? To the big, yeah. Like this morning? No, nothing. Here, let me try the other. So the key switch somehow isn't cranking it, but bypassing it. That engine spins nice yes. and easy. And you can feel the compression, that's good. Okay, so I think we just had a bad connection there. Looks like the front one's spinning just fine. That's cool. So let's see what the back one does if i crank that so, so same thing it's just like come on now so, yeah maybe it was just just sticky to the coil or something you know right 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 do you have the key on uh no right now it's off Okay. Alright. Awesome. So that rear engine is spinning. 
no problem, but the key's not doing it. Yeah, yeah. The thing, I think it's super corroded. Right, thing. just corrosion. Yeah. All right, we'll all clean a bunch of contacts there and see yeah. if that helps out. So, clean some contacts there. Now rear engine cranks with the key. So we've got front and rear engines cranking with the key. They are free and moving fine. That's a really good sign. I didn't expect anything less than that. But um, anyway, once we can get a fuel source settled out there, then we can start these things. And drive it. I'm trying to get in to check the little dipstick for the transmission, see where the fluid level is, oil level's up, and looks pretty decent. Of course, access to things are not as easy as they should be. Of course, most people don't put a bigger engine in a car like this, let alone one in the back seat. So I don't even know if we'll be able to reach the uh, dipstick on that one, but we'll have to give it a try. Well, that one must be easier. Maybe easier well, on this one. Yeah. Look good? Yeah. All right, cool. So here's the bladder for the fuel cell. Now I'm a stock car guy, so fuel cells in my brain don't really uh, meet, but that's obviously a custom made thing specifically for this car. Um, really pretty wild. It's even got the little notch and stuff there. So that's gonna be a challenge to uh, find somebody that can replicate that. But fortunately it looks like it's all in one piece. So if we brought them this, they could do another one of those, I would think. Yeah. And then we just got to get it in there. And... It's just stripped out. You know, it's right. Stripped out. It's just... It just fell apart. There's no rip. Huh. Maybe it's still good? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I'd say that is enough for today on the Honda CRX. We've got the brakes sorted out. They're bled. It is back down on the ground, so brakes should be working. We know that both engines crank. Uh, we've checked fluids in the engines and transmissions. Uh, we've pulled the seats and stuff out to get access to the back engine here and the fuel cell that is leaking or was leaking. So that's the next thing on the list is to tackle that fuel cell, find somebody that can rebuild this original style cell, uh, get a new one of these bags in there so that we can start this thing up and run it and drive it. And I do think once we've got the fuel system sorted out that we can fire this thing up and go for a spin, which is something that I'm really, really super excited about. Talking to the previous owner about it and a couple of other people that have actually had a chance to drive this car back in the day. Every single one of them says that it is absolute magic on the road, including some guys like Oscar Jackson from Jackson Racing, uh, who knows a bit about driving cool CRXs. He's probably driven more than anybody else on the planet. And he said, this car is absolute magic. So I hope to bring that magic to you guys next uh, when we get it up and running while I'm waiting for the fuel cell to uh, uh, get sorted out. I'm going to do some cleaning to the interior panels, some more detailing and stuff to the body. Uh, but for right now, I am going to go back in the house. It is hot as living heck out here. Looking at the thermometer here. Yowza. It's almost 110 degrees here in the lab, and we have pushed ourselves far enough today. In any case, thanks for watching, everybody. Keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.